we've been in Traverse City before, and we found some pretty good cars, but we left some meat on the bone. So we're back now, uh, about a year and a half later, to follow up on some leads that have come in since we've been here last time. Uh, this first we're going, we're going to, I'm, I'm told it's a sports car in a garage. I don't know what it is, I don't know where we're going, uh, following my GPS. I guess here we are. We're uh, just outside of Traverse City, Michigan. I'm here with Denny Hoxie, who is a farmer. And you know, all of us eat what these guys produce, but very few of us actually find out what goes on on the farm. So tell me, well, first of all, thank you for meeting us this morning. Thanks for being here. Tell us about fifth generation of this Fifth farm? generation. My great-great-grandfather laid out the village of Acme. You just drove through it. And uh, he did the original plat of the village of Acme. We, uh, we've farmed here for five generations. We've, our farm has grown potatoes. Uh, we had a dairy. Uh, we've had beef cattle. We had cherries, uh, apples, pumpkins, pickles, a lot of things. Now it's kind of uh, centered around our farm market and our apples and pumpkin production. So. Cool. Wow, that's cool. So you're a farmer and you're also a car guy. Uh, yeah, got that from my dad. <laughs> what did your dad have? What was he well, into? Well, so my dad was the mailman in the area. Mailman, good job. Mailmen get to, to, to know everything. Yeah, and so, so he always was interested in cars. He wasn't a fixer kind of guy, but he liked old cars. I was the fixer, and, and so he, from day one, he kind of said, oh, you know, there's a, there's a cool old car. We ought to see if we can buy that, you know. And, and so we, you know, we'd just kind of sock them away. And, you know, we had, you know, one time we had a 40 by 60 building in Antrim County that had, was full of old cars, you know, and, and uh, uh, some, a bunch of Model A's and some Lincolns and Volkswagens and stuff like that. So, uh, and I just kind of continued with the, with the whole process. Uh, liked them. I haven't had time to fix them the last few years because I've been too busy farming. But, well, uh, Let's see what you got, man. All right, Thank good, you. good. Let's yeah. go. All right, where do we start? Well, let's let's go here. This is going to be a bit of a challenge. Uh, well, maybe it's better, but we're in the process of having a garage sale because oh. a barn sale because we're moving eventually, oh, wow. and so we got all this junk out here. Oh, so I, yeah, maybe we'll buy some. Uh, you know, I can open doors and, and I, but I can, and I can turn lights on. It's low and sleek. I love it. Yeah. Can I? Would you mind if I felt? And see if I can identify you know, this no, car. Cool, yeah. See if you can do it. See if you can identify it without feeling first. That's probably the challenge. Well, I'm, I'm seeing two protrusions here, which kind of gives me an idea. Uh, well, all right. To, to, I'm gonna have to identify. I think I know what it is. And I'd say it's a Jaguar, and I'd say it's an XK120 or 140. Wow, well, you're good. Because I think the 150 grill would be wider than that. Am I am I correct? You got it. <laughs> well, lift it up. <laughs> All right. It's dirty. Oh man, look at that. RAC rally badge. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Careful the door; it's a little bit loose. But because I wow, we can just put that right on the floor. Right. So you know, I mean, I don't know how many of my episodes you've watched. But every time I open a garage door or a barn door, I dream I'm going to find an XK120 or 140 Roadster in there. Every time. And I have actually found one in uh, Detroit. Actually, I found one of a coupe and a, and a Roadster. It's, it's interesting you say that. I wanted one of these cars. I, I, I don't know if I want, you want to take a lot of time, but I'll tell you the story. No, I'd love to hear it. I used to hitchhike back and forth from track practice in Traverse City when I was in, in high school, hitchhiking up M72 here one time, and there, I, I got a ride, and when I did, there was a Jaguar like this on the side of the road that had a flat tire and the wheel was off. First time I had seen one, I was like in eighth grade, and I saw that car and said, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And, and so, so that, from that time on, I've always wanted a, a XK120 Jaguar. Well, so I finally found this one down in Grand Rapids, and I did just what you said. I went to this house in the nicer district of Grand Rapids, opened up these bifold garage doors, and here's this car sitting there. And it was, it was just, you know, two cement uh, wheel things going up to the garage, just like you dream of, you know. And so the car was a mess, but, uh, um, you know, it was... What year did you go, did you go 
find it and, and buy it? Uh, 77. Really? Yeah. What year did you graduate high school? 66. Really? So 11 years after graduation? Yeah. Man. yeah. So yeah, it was, it was a mess. It was pretty rusty. Um, and so I brought it back and spent a year um, redoing it. It was before you really uh, spent a lot of time restoring yeah, yeah, uh, right. you know, a car like yep. this. Yep. You know, it wasn't quite old enough yet. And, yep. But it, uh, you know, it ran great. And we drove it for a long time. Uh, then I uh, had it at a car show up in St. Ignace, and uh, the water pump failed. And so I, I brought it home, and, um, and I said, you know, there's a couple other things that needed attention. I said, you know, if I don't take this car apart, I'm going to keep driving, and I'm going to wreck something. Because yeah, yeah. it was really Were nice. you able to drive it back from the car? No, show? no, we had to pull it home. Okay, yeah. yeah, so. And uh, so I took the motor out, and, uh, uh, and, but that's, and so that's as far as I got. So what year did you take the motor out? 1989. And it's been sitting here been since? It's been sitting here since 89. So this, this hood opens? Yeah, but I think it's, uh, it, we can, the engine's over here. Okay, yeah, yeah I see yeah. it's empty. I just wanted yeah. to show. Yeah, so I think we, uh, I, it may be on. I'll, I'll tell you, no. you, know, you know what you could do? You could shine the camera through here and see that it's engineless. If you can see that, it's pretty cool. Was this car originally old English white when you got no, it? No, it was, it was Robin's Egg Blue. So exactly. this, is the, this is the way I love them. This is the way it should be. I tell you what, I would just put a motor back in here and yeah. enjoy it as is. So the motor's over here. The motor's over here, yeah. Okay. yeah. And so the motor, numbers match, transmission, all the date codes, everything works. Well, except the, the head, and that's one of the reasons they took it out, is because the head is an earlier version than the, than the um, block. Oh, okay. it doesn't, that doesn't match. The, the, um, yeah. the uh, earlier version head, 52 and er earlier, I believe, had extra oh, stud yeah, covers yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you yes, see yes. where this has been leaking, yep. that's why. Well, it's been leaking, and so I said, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the right head back on this car. It may not match number wise, right, right, right. but it'll be at least. The Did right you find head. a head? Not yet. No. Okay, uh, that yeah. shouldn't be very. Wasn't it the uh, the the racing head that everybody went towards? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The C type head. Right, C type. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Hmm. I guess. The gentleman I bought the car from told me that this car was originally owned by a, a gentleman named Dan Gerber, who you've probably heard of. It, it, Gerber uh, Baby Food. The he was Baby Food. He was a race, he was a race back guy. In the 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Now I don't know. Never, never been able to document it. Never tried. But he told me that it was owned by him at one time, and so uh, that. And didn't he live up here? I think he was around here somewhere. I right? mean, maybe Milwaukee, maybe yeah. Michigan. I'm not quite sure. Huh. Wow. So, what's your intention for this now that you're? Well, I, I hate to say it, but I think the car's uh, going to go away. Um, I, 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 I don't, I don't really want to do that, but yet. The interest has changed enough that it, that, 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 that it may have to happen, you know. Wow. And, and so I still have other vehicles, and you know, I mean, I'm, I'll be pacified, even yeah. though I, you know this was my, still is my love, but you know, there's other things we might want to do. Well, I'm sure we'll come back to this. You got other things we can look yeah, at here? Yeah, we can walk over to one of the other buildings. So you know what's funny? I also used to hitchhike home from track practice. <laughs> You know, because you, you could take the regular bus, but if you stayed for sports, you had to get home on your own. So I'd hitchhike. Yeah. And I got picked up in, it was 19, I graduated in 72. It would have been 68 or 69. I got picked up by one of the first 500 Trans Am Pontiac uh, Firebirds. It was white with blue stripes, and they had to build 500 of them yeah. to homologate it for SCCA sure. Trans Am racing. And I got, and it had a little dash plaque on this. I said, what kind of Firebird is this? He said, this is the new Trans Am. Close the door. <laughs> you know, throwing gears. It was great. Ah, <laughs> uh, Jaggers. That's a sweet. Yeah. That's a sweet car. Uh, yeah. In, in this career I have here now, people say, "What do you do with all the cars you buy?" I said, yeah. "It's easy. I don't buy anything." Well, yeah. And, and exactly. And, and what a great building we're walking in. Oh, look at this. Wow. Oh, this is what we live for. Oh yeah, I knew you'd like this. That's a 30 grill, 31 grill. Wow. So that's a double A Ford truck, isn't it? Yeah. So it's probably a 28 or 29 or something? Well, it's the it says 29 on the title, but it, the body says 30. Okay. Now, how long has this been sitting here? I don't know. I backed it in here about 25 years ago, <laughs> I think. It drove in? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we drove it around here quite a bit. Um, this is another good story. I got this when I was 14 years old. This sat over in a, a farmyard uh, about a mile from here, and he, uh, he thought it was kind of a neat looking truck, and so um, we made arrangements with the guy. We traded him uh, a load of hay and 50 bucks for that truck. And uh, we dragged you it home. You can't make up that. That's, no. <laughs> that's from a different era. Yeah. Unbelievable. 
So it had a broken crankshaft pulley. Uh -huh. uh, and that, so this was basically my first car. And my, my, my brothers and I worked on it, got the crankshaft pulley off, and, and put a new one on, and started her up, and we drove it around the farm for years. And so. But not on the street, it was never... No, we never, never put it on the street. It was too, you know, it's, it's pretty, because of the reduction gears and everything, it's really yeah, slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Isn't that cool? I, lo I love the stories attached to these. Yeah. What, is it, what does it feel like to be saying goodbye to something you've had since you're 14, or, you know, the Jaguar? Well, you know, it, this is, it, it's kind of hard, because, I mean, this is what I've done all my life. Uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've been a farmer all my life, and, and I've, I've had these things all my life. This, yeah. It's kind of hard, but, you know, um, we're looking forward to the, to the next phase. Yeah. And so, you know, we can do it. You know? I, I'm at the same point that, yeah. um, you know, I don't need all these vehicles. I can, yeah. I can thin down and still have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> In fact, they become a burden. You know, to yeah. maintain them and yep. insure them, and the gas goes bad, and they got to rebuild the carburetors. Oh, I know, yeah, yeah. You got any more? Yeah. Oh, cool. Dungeon find. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you're, we're going to have to deal with barn swallows. Uh, it, 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 this is this is fun because they stay pretty close to you usually. And so I wonder how old this foundation is here. Oh gosh, I think the barn was built in seventeen. Well, that looks like a nice yeah. old Ford pickup. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of into the stuff that we use now, our, the old John Deere tractor and the old Ford tractor, we still use those, and so as this old, we do with this old Ford pickup. Um, That's a camper special. It is. Oh, it is a camper special. It's got the boxes, the utility box on the side. Yeah. So yeah, the camper special it has eight lug wheels, yeah. and what does it have, like a 352 in it or a It does, yeah. 352. Yeah. Yeah, I remember a, a friend's family <coughs> had one of these and they put a camper on it back. Yeah, and this, this had a camper on it. One of our neighbors over here, who was a cherry grower, bought a farm out on Old Mission Peninsula and uh, this truck was on the farm and it came with the farm when he bought it. And he didn't have any, any, any need for it. So he, uh, I bought it from him and our migrant crew used it to haul sweet cherries out of the orchard. And they'd drive it 17 miles one way up and down the road hauling sweet cherries. And Finally, I decided that, gosh, it was kind of a nice truck. Maybe I better get something different for them to go up and down the road with. So. Is it pretty solid? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it runs great. Wow. That's a nice truck. So the license plate, 66, is that what it is, 66? Yep, said? 66. Has it not been on the road since then, or is it just a... No, mid no, we've, we've driven it. It's a, like a historic plate. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a long bed, that, and that, yeah. I guess, was true to the camper specials. And was that an option, do you think? I think that was an option. It appears that it was because it, it, it fits so nicely, you know? Yeah, it does. It hugs the body. It's, so it's got a receiver hitch. Yeah. And also you could put a, a smaller trailer ball on there. Well, that's a nice truck. <laughs> Gesundheit. Very nice. Yeah, so this is one of them we're going to save. Only be, it, it's the year my wife and I graduated from high school, and it's kind of a cool truck. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of value, but yet it's... Up so you'll top. bring this to your new house, you have a garage, oh, yeah. and, and you polish it up and drive it around yeah. parades and stuff? Yeah, yeah. it's special. So the Camper Specials had a heavy-duty suspension, heavy-duty cooling package, uh, heavy-duty axles, brakes, had these utility boxes on the side, uh, and it was made for, uh, you know, for hauling a camper. And uh, it's, a, it's a 250, now we call it an F-250. And this had deluxe paint, I'm an old Ford salesman, two-tone paint with the deluxe trim, which was odd to have a, a trim package on a truck. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so this is deluxe paint, two-tone? Two-tone, yeah. You paid, oh, really? you paid extra for that, yeah. Oh, you know, that's yeah. cool. Hmm. That's a good one. Okay, so there's one. We can go in this building here. This isn't, uh, you might be interested, you might not, but we'll, uh, I can open this one door. We'll have to go in this way. But. Okay. That's about as far as we're going to go. But so these are trucks that we still use. They're still roadworthy, but they're okay. relatively old, and they're kind of really nice, nice trucks. But, uh, ah, okay, yeah. So you know they're still all inspected and, and uh, uh, mm -hmm. put new. What tires. year are they? '69 International and a '78 International. And so, do you like? Did you buy these new? No, I bought this one from the original owner, mm -hmm. the the '78, and that's when I got 49,000 miles on. Just went around this area here. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, guys are starting to buy these and, and restore them because yeah. because you don't ever see them restored. You see them on a on a on a at a car show on a Sunday, you're like, wow, that's yeah. pretty. 
Yeah. Yeah. You've got a neat little uh, lifestyle going here. <laughs> You're leaving there now? Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Right back. Ha! It's on his way. <laughs> This is, see, this is how it happened. Yeah. You know, this is how yeah. one guy tells you about another guy, and yeah. before you know it, four days are not enough time. So, so this is how it happens. We, <laughs> uh, we, we spent some time here at Denny's farm looking at various vehicles, including one that I'm absolutely gaga over, which is the Jaguar XK120. And I say, do you know of any other old cars that might be in the area? And he says, well, yeah, there's another Jaguar just on the other side of the street. And so, Jim, come on over here. So this is this is Denny's friend Jim, and and well, and thank you for <laughs> advising us. Well, Jim has an XK150 Jaguar uh, for almost as long as Denny has owned his. You bought yours when? 77. And you bought yours? Well, we're not exactly sure. Late 70s, early 80s. There you go. So we're going to get in the Woody and drive over to uh, Jim's building and and see what Jaguar he's got. So that's how easy it is. Thank you. Well, it's as easy as that, and I can't wait to see what's inside. Far, back here in the know. corner. So how long has this been here? Um, the plate on it is 85. That's the last time I drove it. And it's moved a couple times, but I think I bought this building in the late 90s. So what, what are the chances of, of two Jaguars in one town, a quarter mile from each other? Would you mind if we uncover it? No, go ahead. Where, where do we put it? Just, Just wherever you can find. Okay. So how long has it been since this has been uncovered? I've had it covered since 1985. In this building? No, it changed buildings a couple times. <laughs> we have... Oh, look at that. Creamy, like, is that a yellow? Creamy, or old English, oh, it's a coupe. Chrome wire wheels. Oh yeah, I had the wheels all redone. Wow. That was the one thing we did. So tell me the story about this car. You bought this car. In what year? Well, we're not sure. Late 70s, early 80s. Okay. And was it local? Uh, we, yes. We got out of an uh, auction out in Elk Rapids. And, and you used it as, was it an everyday car or was it a toy you kind of used occasionally? It, it was a toy we used occasionally. Mm -hmm. these, so, ca these cars have a tendency to break down quite a bit. Oh, yeah. What did you do to it? Did you paint it? Did you do bodywork, rebuild the engine, anything like that? I got... I refixed the wire wheels, got new tires on it. Uh, we put in a new engine. Really? Yep, and because uh, it had a cracked head. We'd drive it to Charavoy or out to the sand dunes occasionally. Got a lot of looks, but uh, mm -hmm. it just lost interest in it, I guess. So yep. what, what year's the license plate? 85. 85, that's, that's, yep. that's it, wow. So you probably never put many miles on it. Oh no, no, no. So what, what's your intention for this car? I'm going to sell it. You're going to sell no, it, really? Kids don't want it. And like, it really needs some work. Mm -hmm. It needs some body work. Oh, we could do a package deal here. <laughs> Does, so did it have a lot of rust? Uh, yeah, there's quite a bit of Bondo on it. Is there really? Yeah. I was driving down once down the road in Traverse, and the steering linkage fell apart. So I'm sitting there steering, and nothing was happening. I ended up in the uh, yard of a gas station. Oh, man. So do you still have the other engine? Or did you get rid of that? Yeah, I think it's right over in a box over here. Really? Well, there's a bumper for it, right? Yeah. Oh, more wire wheels. More, more it's wire like wheels. Christmas. It's in here somewhere. Parts of it. Oh, this is all your spare parts, okay. Oh, there's, I think there's a block right there, okay. Cam covers. So this is, you know, overhead cam, six cylinder. Not an overhead valve, so there's your two cam covers. And this is the more modern one with the uh, screw holes in the front to prevent that from oil leaking out. Hmm. So in here is probably most of an engine. Well, oh, pretty cool car. Thanks for sharing. You're welcome. It's been a, it's been a great morning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there's not too many mornings that top this, I gotta tell you.
Jim, thank you. You can go, you can go back to work now. All right. Thanks. I don't for, work thanks for. Too hard. <laughs> uh, well, I don't work too hard either. All right. Well, happy hunting to you. See you later. Hey, good meeting you. I'll give you a ride home. It's free. Well, Jim can't do Well, you can ride. Right. Yeah, you can get right If I get a second ride in the Woody, I'll take it. I'll, I'll burn rubber with it this All time. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. Have a good day. Tell me what kind of motor it is. Okay, Let's see. good. Yes, you need to look and tell me. <laughs> I see. Now I've seen some of these on the side of the road. And they have yeah. headers. They have headers coming out of them. And stuff. Yeah. That's a GM motor. So I guess it's Chevy, right? Yeah. Ha. Huh. Two barrel V8. And so that's just driving wind, so that frost doesn't settle on your plants. Is that it, right? It, it keeps the air moving. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And it's on a on a truck frame, I guess. Yeah, it's old pickup. Yeah. Wow. It's auto automatic. Yeah. <laughs>